I'm Tessia. And I'm Carl. We're joined by Kilo and Fermi to present an at-home project for measuring tiny things. Today we're going to measure the width of a single strand of dog fur. If I look at one of Kilo's hairs, it is too small to accurately measure with a ruler. I can guess it is smaller than a tenth of a millimeter, but we can measure much more accurately by using a laser pointer. Let's get started. That's right, Kilo. Before we get started, we have to talk about safety. First, ask an adult to help supervise. An extra pair of hands can be useful for taking measurements. Never stare directly at a laser and never point the laser towards another person's or animal's eyes. We're working with a red cat toy laser. Pet toy lasers are safest since they're low powered. However, we'll still need to follow these safety rules. For this experiment, you'll need a pencil or chopstick, a small tub of modeling clay such as Play-Doh, two binder clips, some masking or washi tape, a tape measure with centimeter increments, and a laser pointer. You'll also need paper and a pencil to write down your measurements. The first setup we'll need to do for this experiment is to make a ring stand. Ring stands are commonly used in the lab to hold equipment. Today we'll be making a ring stand at home out of a pencil, modeling clay, binder clips, and tape. First, slide the two binder clips onto the pencil and tape them into place. Now we're ready to place our first sample into the holder. Tape each end of the fur to the two binder clips. You will want to gently pull the fur so it is straight as possible. Finally, place the pencil into the tub of modeling clay to hold it upright. As a reminder, when you collect your fur sample, take it out of a brush or comb. No need to pull hair. Now that we've assembled our sample, let's place it on the table so we can align our laser. Use books to raise the laser pointer to the same height as the hair. It is important that the laser beam is parallel to the table, which means the laser is shining straight to the wall. Now I'm going to turn the laser on to check the alignment. At this time, I'm going to tape the button down so the beam is constant. I can see that the laser aperture or opening is a little higher than where it shines on the hair, so I'm going to straighten the laser beam using a little bit of modeling clay. Before we get started on the measurement, let's take a look at the diffraction pattern. You can see the laser beam has been split by the hair onto the wall. This happens because light travels as a wave. The hair acts as an obstacle in the path of the wave, which causes the wave to diffract in different directions. There are two measurements we need to take to calculate the width of the hair. First, we need to know the distance between the hair and the wall. Let's measure this now. The distance between the hair and the wall in our experimental setup is 97.5 centimeters. Next, we need to measure the points on the diffraction pattern. To make this easier, I'm going to tape a piece of paper on the wall and mark the points where the laser is brightest. Now I'll measure the distance between the center point and the next brightest point to one side. The distance uh, between the brightest point and the next brightest point is 1.45 centimeters. Now that we have our measurements, we can calculate the width of the hair. First, I want to introduce you to Bragg's Law. This is an equation which describes how light acts when it hits an object. Pretty neat, right? The N stands for which peak we measured starting from the center. We measured the distance from the center to the first peak, so n equals 1. This character is called lambda and stands for the wavelength or distance from wave peak to wave peak of the laser. Most red lasers have a wavelength of 650 nanometers. A nanometer is 1 billion times smaller than a meter. Many laser pointers will have the wavelength written on the label. Little d stands for the hair width. This is the value we want to find. The final part of this equation is the symbol theta, which represents the angle between the peaks in the diffraction pattern. We need to do a little more math to find theta from the values we measured. Thinking back to our laser setup, we had the wall on the left and the ring stand with the hair on the right, and we measured the distance big D between the wall and the ring stand. We also measured the distance between peaks in the diffraction pattern. Let's call this value A. If we were to draw a line between where the laser hit the hair and where the laser hit the wall for the two peaks, it would look like a triangle. 
and not just any triangle, a right triangle, which has one of its three angles equal to 90 degrees. We can use a property of right triangles, this tangent function, to solve for theta. Because this angle is very small, we can approximate that the tangent of theta is equal to theta. With this approximation, we now have a simple expression for theta to use in Bragg's law. Now we have an equation with variables n, lambda, little d, little a, and big D. The only variable we don't know is little d, which is the width of the hair. If we rearrange this equation, we can solve for the width of the hair. We can divide both sides by all values which are not little d on, from the right side to get little d by itself. On the right, these values are canceled and move to the left side. Our final expression has little d, the width of the hair by itself, equal to this expression. Now all that's left to do is solve. First, let's list all of the measured values we'll use in this equation. N equals 1, lambda is 650 nanometers, A is 1.45 centimeters, and big D is 97.5 centimeters. Next, plug this equation into a scientific calculator or web browser. This equation tells us the width of the hair is over 21,000 nanometers. One nanometer is equal to one million millimeters. So if I divide this answer by one million, I'll find that the width of the hair is about 0 0.0219 millimeters. So this is a cool technique to play with at home, but is it useful? Scientists use diffraction patterns to measure distances of items even smaller than hair. They use it to measure distances between atoms. Knowing the distances between atoms helps us understand the underlying structure and associated functions in the materials all around us. How can we change our at-home experiment? You can use any fiber in your ring stand as long as the width of that item is smaller than the width of the laser. See, if I were to use this piece of chunky yarn, the yarn completely blocks the laser. But if I use this smaller sewing thread, I can measure a pattern. Try this with any other objects around your house. To summarize, today we pointed a laser at a piece of hair and it measured the distances between points in the diffraction pattern. Using some fun math, we then used these measurements to calculate the width of the hair. We hope you have fun doing this experiment at home.